If you've ever tried to find something to watch on Netflix only to give up after a few hours of searching, you might be surprised to find out that more than 80% of the views on Netflix are because of its recommendation system. And the company saves up to $1 billion a year in customer acquisition because of it. Actually, Netflix knows that if you aren't watching something after 2 minutes of entering the website, you'll probably leave. It makes sense then that in 2006, they introduced the Netflix price, which offered $1 million if anybody could improve their recommendation system by 10%. So how do these recommender systems even work? Well, there are mainly two types of recommender systems. Firstly, there's content-based filtering, and then there's collaborative filtering. Content-based filtering takes advantage of the fact that if you watched a certain movie, you're more willing to watch movies that are similar to it. Say for example, you watch an animated comedy movie. You're more likely to watch another animated comedy movie than say for example, a real life action movie. So what Netflix will do is check every movie in its database and rank it from the most similar to the least similar to the movie that you just watched. But just because two movies have similar properties doesn't mean you're more likely to watch both of them. For example, in Infinity War and Joker are both comic book based movies, but they're both very different. This is why sometimes collaborative filtering is used. Now we all like to think that we're special, but we're really not. Chances are that if you liked a movie, so did thousands of other people. So that's what collaborative filtering takes advantage of. It finds all the people who like the same movies as you and checks which movies they have in common in their history. It's kind of like a voting scheme where each person that watched a particular movie contributes one vote to that movie. And then in the end, the movies are ranked by the most votes to the least amount of votes. Now we've seen the two types of recommender systems, but what we usually find is that combining both of them gives the best results through a technique called matrix factorization. Let's say you have a preference for certain genres of movies. Also, every movie can be classified into certain genres. Now this is true for every user and for every movie in the Netflix database. If you think about it, it's like a transitive relationship between the users and the genres and the genres and the movies. And and the interesting thing is, if you take this matrix of the user preferences and this matrix of the movie classifications and you multiply them, you get a good indication of how much each user will like each movie. Now obviously every user hasn't watched every movie, so a more realistic representation of the matrix is like this. And the job of our recommender system is to figure out what values go into these empty cells. The higher the value, the more likely you are to watch that movie. And what's amazing is that to find out this value, all we have to do is multiply the values in this row which we already know with the values in this column which we already know as well. Now you might be wondering how does the system know my preferences and how each movie classifies into each category? Well this is where machine learning comes in. Firstly humans are horrible at deciding how to classify things so instead we let the AI decide how to classify your preferences and the movies into certain features. We just decide how many features will be used by the system. Next, we take some data which we already know, which is a matrix of how much each user in our database liked the movies that they watched. This is known as the training data. Then, we use the magic of machine learning to figure out the values which would need to be inside these two matrices so that they would give our resultant training data when they are multiplied. This is usually an iterative process where we start off with some random numbers and slowly move closer to the ideal values. Now, now, if we want to find out how much you would like to watch a particular movie, all we have to do is multiply the values in these two matrices which we learned using machine learning. Pretty cool, right? Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go spend 10 more hours trying to find something to watch on Netflix while my food gets cold. If you like the video, please do subscribe.